When I was a child, I used to lay in bed late at night, staring at the ceiling, listening to my father scream. Scream at my mother, scream at yet another failed masterpiece. Finally, just scream out into the darkness. It became my lullaby. And even when they took me away, the screams followed. I was once told that insanity runs in my family. It's time to make it stop. in here. I swear that dog doesn't shut up! How the hell did you get out? Go on, get out of here! Before I find a way to keep you in there for good. Still life. <coughs> oh, this place is a mess. I can hear you in there. I'm coming, you furry little bastards. You're not getting away this time. What is that? <laughs> yes, that's it. I wonder when was the last time this place saw sunlight. What are you doing? Put that down! You're much too old for that childish nonsense!
little girl in red was walking through the woods, when suddenly, out of nowhere, jumped out you know who. Eyes glowing bloody red, teeth sharp as razors, and yet the big bad wolf did not seem to faze her. Be careful, little girl, the big bad wolf sneered. You're in fantasy land, where things ain't what they seem. Oh, shush, you big old meanie, the frightened girl exclaimed. You're the only threat in this wonderful land. With my magic crayons, I can do no harm. I can make the trees yellow, turn them upside down, turn grass into candy, make the sky go red. I can do whatever pops into my head. The wolf was unimpressed with his show of skill. You do have the power to do what you will. Alas, I humbly urge you to practice restraint, for you are responsible for what you create. You're nasty, jealous, and mean, said the little girl. I just want to have fun, and you want me to learn. I wish a big old rock would fall down from the sky and crush your big bad mouth into a minced meat pie. Don't do it, I beg you, the big wolf cried. You lack scale and perspective, my sweet little child. But it was too late. His warning fell on deaf ears. Down came the rock and smashed them all to smithereens. Creativity is not a toy, it's a gift! Do you want to squander it like all those careless brats out there? I warned you time and time again! I won't let you waste time in these mindless doodles! This is for your own- Finally! Are you ready to embrace true art? Oh, the summer trees, so green and vibrant and full of life, but also young and inexperienced. Let's try to find them a more poignant season, where they are wiser and have some stories to tell. Ah, yes, the autumn of life, when man seeks shelter from the elements. Let's see how our little hut fares when the skies grow dark. You see? In the end, all we take for granted is fragile and temporary. Man passes while nature endures. Speaking of which, I don't think our proud stallion likes the weather. Let's brighten things up a bit. I warned you time and time again! I won't let you waste time in these mindless doodles! This is for your own good!
little girl in red came upon a crossroads. There she stopped and wondered, which way should I go? Up jumped the wolf and gave the poor girl a fright. Do not be afraid, I'm not going to bite. One of these paths with danger is fraught, while the other one, most assuredly, is not. The little girl in red took a shortcut she knew, through a lovely field of corn, all covered in dew. But the field grew dark and full of despair, and the eerie sense of dread filled the morning air. The girl heard the wolf yelling from afar, You have chosen poorly, you will not get far. Had you only learned how shadow and light intertwined on canvas, you could have chosen right. The little girl in red ran as fast as she could, her flowing dark hair tucked under her hood. But she quickly got tired, worn out by her flight, and succumbed to the darkness, never to see the light. Are you trying to annoy me? This is not what I've taught you. What? You think I'm enjoying this? You think I'm doing this out of spite? Get it right next time and I won't have to fix it for you!
Finally! Are you ready to embrace true art? You see? In the end, all we take for granted is fragile and temporary. Man passes while nature endures. Speaking of which, I don't think our proud stallion likes the weather. Let's brighten things up a bit. That's right! The sun bestows its kind rays upon the land. It's getting warmer and warmer until finally... Marvelous, isn't it? I know it seems like a tragedy, but a beautiful tragedy is always better than an unremarkable existence. In his own way, I believe he meant well. He wanted me to excel hoping that when the time came, I would succeed where he failed. Avoid his mistakes. God knows he made plenty of those. Ugh, what's wrong with this thing? You, you want to sit on Daddy's lap? Come on, it's okay. Remember that being there? I can hear you out there. Please, please help me. It hurts. Oh, it hurts so much. I can't take it anymore. Mm. Yes. Thank you. It's so good to feel that there's still beauty in this world. All right, young lady. Shall we continue? Right. Whatever happens, just keep looking at me and listen. Now, where was it? Ah, yes. The princess was all alone in the dark. And yet, she felt that the evil witch was lurking nearby. As her eyes adjusted to the darkness, she saw something moving in the corner. And yet, she did not dare to move, 
before she knew that that would be the end of her. The princess heard a fearsome growl. The witch had unleashed her familiar, the hellhound. The monster slipped into the air. Its perky ears wearing even the slightest sound. The princess remained motionless, letting the monster pass. There was a stillness in the air. The princess breathed a sigh of relief. For a moment, it seemed like the worst was behind her. And yet she knew that it was not over. There was still danger nearby, waiting for her slightest move. Frozen in terror, she kept looking. <clears throat> Frozen in terror, she kept looking straight ahead. Suddenly, she heard a terrifying cackle. It was the evil witch herself. The wretched thing despised beauty and innocence, for she had neither. <laughs> the hag was near, just outside of you. But our heroine didn't dare to look. She had to keep her head straight, lest she be cursed by the witch's foul magic. She could almost feel the chilling touch of the witch's hand at her neck. She felt Don't fail me now, princess! She felt the sudden urge to run away, but fought it with all her will, for she knew that was precisely what the witch would have wanted. And then, just like that, the chill was gone. She saw a glimmer of light over the horizon. The sun was almost upon her. It was almost dark. It was almost over. And there. The princess stood triumphant in the sun, smiling as she... Wait. That's not right. Her face. Why is she still... scared? Oh, God. I didn't mean to... Princess... I am so sorry. It's not that he was cruel. It's just that, to him, reality was just a pale reflection of art. He was blind to the world, unless it was translated to him through a canvas. there. Oh, come on, don't be afraid. It won't bite. Here, try for yourself. No, no, that, that's not quite right. Huh, still not quite there. Go get your crayons. like talent runs in the family.
Hey there, young lady. Shouldn't you be in bed? It's all right, you can stay. Just don't make too much noise. Daddy's working. What do you mean, who's that? It's Mommy. What? That's not what Mommy looks like? Well, she does to me. Day to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. out. She's waiting for us. Don't make me do this by myself. No, I don't want her to see me like this. I'm, I'm sorry, I just, I can't. <laughs> why, why would you do this? What am I supposed to do now? I can't do this without you.
you. I need my medicine. Oh, please. Oh, it hurts so much. Why won't you help me? Why are you punishing me like this? Whatever I did, I'm sorry. Princess, Princess, wake up. I need you to get dressed real quick. There are men coming. Some very bad men. They want to take you away from me. But I won't let them. We won't let them, will we? Yes. Now I remember. Throughout all the chaos and misery, in his own flawed and misguided way, he did love her after all. His way of expressing it was a different matter altogether. It's... it's me. But what does it mean? Oh, there has to be more to this. I don't know what I expected to find. A farewell note? A final will? What I found was an apology. 
expressed in the only language he ever truly knew. At that moment, I could finally see my father for what he was. A man driven insane with sadness and guilt, trapped in this house, a nightmarish echo chamber of past mistakes and tragedies. It was this house, a place beyond hope, beyond redemption. I knew what I had to do. I had given up trying to understand my father a long time ago. Finally forgive him. Hey, princess. What have you got there? Oh, that's so lovely, sweetie. But why pink? 